I think we have a May snow. I think we have the poplar trees are snowing everywhere. We almost can't see anything. That's going to help the crickets. They don't have to worry about anything. They can just keep their little cricket feet going. We've got clouds and clouds of snow everywhere. Just all of a sudden, big explosion. I'll go ahead and point out that it's right about the new moon. I always find the coincidence very interesting. For those of you on broadcast, Passcast or recast. This ought to be BTWRLM216. And thank you very much for tuning in. And those on uh, the pod podcast and the Passcast, all the files you might find, appreciate that you do tune in. I am a little bit disappointed last week. I did, uh, you know, trying to change up little things subtly, do some things here and there, and not much, uh, not much follow through from my discussion from last week for the first 45 minutes, explaining really how, how you go about defending an injunction. And this starts to cause me to think, and I go into my uh, my pseudo-depression about what am I doing, how do I get it, wh- what's this information doing for people, and if anything. And um, so what, what do we do with all this? And so, now people, I'm given what I believe has worked for us to be answers and uh, to, respond to, be, to respond to things. And nobody wants to pick them up. I'm just wondering who we are, what we're doing, what we expect. And what is our complaint? Why do we even have a complaint? If only a, you know, maybe 50, 100 people have any thought to be involved. Generally, what is, our, what is anybody's complaint on any side? You're just agreeing to, to live the crime against you on all fronts. And so it makes me think. And I spend my life doing this and spend my time and uh, not to sound like, oh, woe is me. I mean, there's a big deal here. If I can get a bunch of you folks to start actually moving in and doing things the, the right way. And, uh, folks, I'm going to have to repeat this over and over, it seems. It's amazing to me, people with knowledge, how they don't actually function correctly. They have this knowledge, and it doesn't actually work for them because they don't know how to impose it. And I say impose because you're imposing a defense, necessarily, if you're dealing in the stuff I'm telling you about. If none of you will step up to understand how you make the most basic redressment of an attack against you in any about anywhere I can see. This works even with neighbors. And I don't mean it causes a fight. I mean it stops a fight. It stops it in its tracks if you if you do it the correct right way. And if people won't pick this up, if people won't share the files, say, listen, you gotta listen to this. You may not need it now, but listen to how this works. Listen to you haven't thought about it before, listen to how we have to have a better thought in our brain before we move on and how we're supposed to take action. If, if folks aren't real willing to do even that, I mean, refined through my experience to you, no, certainly you have to trust me at some level until you go trust, you, until you go trust yourself enough to, to go do the research. But if, if no one will actually uh, own up to their responsibility to stop this stuff, and it's, it's really stoppable, uh, the... Again, it's stoppable. What are we doing as a people? What are our expectations? And why do we even talk? Why do we have a complaint? Really, why do we have a complaint? And I mean that. I don't mean that on any, oh, we got the right side of the law. I mean, you don't come up to any responsibility. Why do you have a complaint? If you don't have a complaint, then I don't know about you. If if you want a world where you're, you, and maybe not you, because a lot of you may be too old, uh, before this happens, I'm telling you that they're planning on this. That your little ones in the future are going to suffer this because they're going to be as ignorant or imposed by some re- constraint upon their life, whether it be through television or the phone or the, the computer or some r- legislation that they're going to be have leashes tied to them. You know, we see this picture of the baby with 69 uh, injection needles in, in their body. Uh, well, that doesn't stop. The, the injection needles become a become a, a chain of servitude by other ways all through the life, C- cradle to grave, that we're told all this is on us. And I hear very few people stepping up to actually pass around information that makes them formidable and address these people uh, that have occupied your life uh, better. And I have to say just better because there's no absolutes on any of this. And I don't know, again, if you really... I think if I, if you all understood what I'm saying, you, I could stop talking and we would be going to work. We'd roll up our sleeves and get it done. 
So I'm going to ask you again, uh, for those that didn't think it was important, if you did, uh, again, we're back to taking notes, folks. I I know I talk fast, and I know I don't have a nice formal uh, addressment, but I do know when I go back and listen to it, there, there's a continuum there you need to take notes of if you're, it's important to you. In fact, I mean, what I was talking to you on Sunday, uh, something's come up here local. It's coming up in the next week. And uh, I, I provided the same, almost the same methodology back. I didn't even have to know what the facts of the problem was against the government. I went from a source of law, which is the, in this case, a land condition and the use of it, uh, which is the patent, because it's a patent land, and I went from there. I didn't need to know any other facts, actually. And I used everything that I, well, it, in a different, slightly different way, but the things I told you all last week about how Michael up in Canada can address this different and maybe make a better record and actually address what's up against them. And for as much as it all sounds really great that everyone's really knowledgeable, it's not being applied right is the same thing I'm finding, you know, people I talk with who have a lot of knowledge who just don't understand what they're up against. And I come up to answer their question was identical, almost identical, at least in the, in the principles underneath it. The, the, ans- the words come out a little differently, but the methods I'm, I'm addressing are uh, the same. And I don't get it why I don't have, it's not for me, I guess this is my point. I, you know, if you all had it, then you didn't have to listen to me, I wouldn't have to be here. But I see no one getting it. And I'm going to put no one in a very tough, this is a 99.999% no one gets it. I don't know of hardly anybody else that does, actually, at the level I'm talking about. And the level is what we had to maintain, that keeping that republic, that's what we had to maintain. Nobody's up there. And I'm only at a level that I feel I'm at because there's nobody I can find that can tell me or show me how it's not enough, because it usually is enough, what I'm saying. That not a lot of people will start passing that around for their own sake. This is not for me. This is for your own. This is for you all. It is astonishing to me when I see so many people with a gripe. So I'm, again, I didn't want to do this. I didn't start off this way. I got a whole other thing going on on my tabs, and I'm just looking up there and say, yeah, this is pretty far off your tabs already. I just, I start thinking, what is my purpose in all this? And except to be continuing to have the message go out, and one day maybe someone will find, oh, that's what that guy was talking about. Uh, that, that's you know, probably the only thing I'm having, actually having to rely on anymore. A couple of you guys, a couple of you folks get it. I was going to say guys, it's got guys and gals. You know, some of you folks get it, but you don't, uh, most of you all, even there, uh, really don't have a follow through. And that's not for me. I mean, I follow through. I follow through like uh, like I know how, and uh, whoever is with me will will have that advice to them. And we find that when we do that, and it's a two part problem. When we do that in our remedies, that they start to they don't quite get it at the beginning, but as you start to explain it, now you got education to come. Now you see the double problem that we are. We never kept ourselves knowledgeable enough in the actual things we needed to know, and the people that are making the decisions against us don't even know they're criminals that you have to gently explain what's going on, and they start to see it. It just takes some time. You have to know your stuff good enough to be the teacher. And until I find a mentor that's more knowledgeable in my in the subject matter that I focus on better than me, I have to follow what I know because it seems to work well enough. It works better than a lot of other people, and, if, and I'm telling you that with all earnest, earnestness not to... Not to make you go out and do a bunch of stuff you don't need to do. In fact, I'm trying to keep you from doing a bunch of stuff you haven't needed to do that you are been doing, that you have been doing. And and so I, I just get, I start to think about stuff here, just talking to you on on the radio. This is all just coming off the top of my head on a on a process of things that are uh, troubles me as I go through the week and see what's going on. And 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 then on the other hand, let me see if I can get over to my tabs after I've now done this entry. I'm sure you all don't like tuning in to hear me kind of thrash you a little bit. That's not what my point is. If I hope you take it the more proper way, we have something to do, uh, or or we're 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 taken care of. And I don't know of anybody that listens to me that likes that. And so I'm saying you can't just sit and say and complain about it. You're going to have to step up and t- do something to stop it. And it it seems over and over you'll hear I say it my way. I say it this way. Find the wrong you want, you need to make right, and make it so. Make it right. That's the, a paraphrase of any other comment about taking action. Just start finding something you got to fix. 
bring your bucket to the fire you uh, the, the the brush fire you found bring a shovel bring whatever tools you have and put that brush fire out you're going to find out there's an arson there you're going to find evidence when you go take that fire out that you you've got an arsonist out there that's where the the reality becomes and you start to realize maybe the depth of what you're up to and it's a it's an arson against arsonist that's against the whole way of your life and so how do you how do you fight this arsonist is an interesting problem. Do you continue following after all the fires and hope one doesn't get away from you? Or do you finally set up a, enough people together to go after the arsonist itself while you put the fires out that have been started? There's a lot of work to protect yourself. And so that's a lot of people don't want to do that. And they want to, they, and, and in part rightfully so, there's a lot of life that's gets stuck, in your, stuck in your face that you have to do. And I understand all that. But that's not an excuse. No, 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 no one in uh, in history ever said after the fact. Well, I had to water my petunias uh, uh, while the invading army came and raped my wife and stole my stuff, burnt my house, and then shot me. The problem is they've uh, been real sophisticated. Sophists will do this. Sophisticated uh, to come uh, and an, uh, as, uh, bring it as an artifice and not allow you to perceive. It's you, that same destruction is transparent to you. That's the transparency that I keep talking to you about. And there's a, they've figured us out. They have a method about which they go, and I figured that part out, at least parts of that part out, and su- or sufficiently so, uh, that well, it's not transparent to me or those I work with, and we figure out ways to just defeat that. And it's not that difficult. But you have to persist, and it's nice if you have more people. So let me get onto my tabs, because it's uh, we also, again, I tell you, we have health if you don't have your health, you got nothing. And then they, uh, everywhere you look, you see there's something trying, somebody with a license attempting to uh, to, to hurt you. Uh, but here's a, a simple little thing that came. I was pretty excited about it. In a way, this is my a problem. I, I I believe I ran across, and I actually I can't remember now exactly what it was. It almost almost killed me. That's the situation where I uh, I tell you about my fever, my two and a half week fever. It's supposed to kill me in just a few days, a few hours. Uh, but it was uh, not described to me quite. Just as this thing called sepsis, there was actually a different thing going on, but not much different. But here's a Virginia doctor believes, now listen for the word here, he found a cure for sepsis. sepsis. Now I've got three links, um, I just wanted to make yourself, make you a, aware of this very powerful thing. Uh, the cure literally may be working its way out about this sepsis. This is an b- infection in your blood. Uh, and uh, given it was similar to what I had, got, I, I was I survived two weeks of it. It, it, it. You'll you'll read in the articles. You can keep, be killed in four hours by this thing. It, it really was. The doctor was looking at me, and he says, "I'm, I'm looking at a dead man. You're not supposed to be alive. Uh, this stuff is a killer." And uh, it it was, astonished me how many people each year die from it. Eight million folks. This is a serious thing. It's a blood uh, in the sepsis is a blood infection. Uh, that uh, your body can't keep up with. So the weaker the body, the faster that you'll die. Apparently, I had one that could last two and a half weeks, but I can tell you there was a um, it's an interesting voice that develops in you when you're about to die, and it told me I wasn't going to survive a couple more days. And that's when I decided it wasn't the flu I was fighting. I was fighting something that was literally going to kill me, and I knew it. And so I fought reluctantly, like the guy I am. That's, I guess, you can tell that um, I'm absolutely a male. I didn't want to go to the doctor. And up until the two days before my death, I'd cry, drag my bot over into the clinic and have him look at me. And so, and he says, I'm looking at a dead man. I was supposed to be dead. It's because of this type of thing. A Virginia doctor figures it out. A critical care physician in Eastern Virginia Medical School believes he found a simple, inexpensive cure for sepsis. Sepsis is a condition that leads to multiple organ failure. It is estimated that nearly 8 million people die each year from the disease. Uh, the breakthrough moment for Dr. Paul Merrick. Dr. Paul Merrick, you're going to take, you're gonna take notes because your, your doctors are, may not be liking this because this is a new thing he's found. You want to know about it because you want to end that thing quick. Um, so you got to name uh, Dr. Merrick, and he's the chief of critical care at EVMS, and I think it was in Norfolk, Norfolk Virginia. Um, and, it came, and he came in 2016. This is brand new at least relative to the medical community, which is a slow-motion molasses for care. Uh, They're going to be a bit resistant, and they are, but he's pushing through. Uh, Dr. Merrick was running a general intensive care unit at Santerra Norfolk General, 
When a 48-year-old woman was admitted uh, with a severe case of sepsis, her kidneys had failed, her lungs had failed. Uh, she had just, uh, I, I just knew she was going to die, the doctor says. And, and this is, she probably knew too, but uh, again, how far I was going, my kidneys didn't quite fail, my lungs didn't fail, but I knew that in two days I wouldn't be existing. And I wasn't going to be able to fight the fever, uh, excuse me, fight the flu I thought I had. And I was fortunate because uh, most people, I was too stupid to die, I suppose, and I was too stupid to figure out that it was going to kill me. Um, and but I was uh, blessed to be able to have two more, three, two or two or so more days to walk into a clinic to have the doctor who couldn't figure it out for a long time because most people are dead by then. He finally took 20 minutes of study to figure out what he thought I had, and it was only a big. He says he knew he, he knew what it was, but he he could, didn't have any proof <laughs> at the point because at the point he's talking to me, we had no tests, and it was too late to do much. Uh, the uh, the available treatment options were running out. Renal failure, lungs, yeah, you're pretty much close to the end. Uh, it, it just so happened that a few days earlier, Dr. Merrick read about vitamin C as a possible treatment for sepsis. Seps, septic patients are said to have little or undetectable levels of vitamin C in their cells. Keeping in mind that the vitamin C and steroids work similarly, Dr. Merrick asked, his staff to combine the two and inject them into the patient intravenously. Now, what's interesting in my case is I was still doing, I was doing my herbs and doing my vitamins and all that, so I did have vitamin C. What happened to me, though, that's why it was a little bit different. It was a bacteria that got into my blood from uh, a flu. It was a cold. That's why I thought it was a flu that I had caught, and then I um, my pleural sac broke, and the bacteria went from where it was into my bloodstream directly. It wasn't a condition of the bloodstream not being able to keep up with an infection. And so it was injected. That that was injected. So a little different, but it's really the same because it causes the same thing to happen. So vitamin C and steroids work similarly. Apparently, Bo, I had a plenty of vitamins and all that. But that's why I was fighting it off pretty well until I, I, I didn't figure that I was. So that you inject hydrocortisone and vitamin C, he figured out, uh, and the results were unexpected. Within hours, the patient was reportedly recovering. Within two days, Dr. Merrick gave her the okay to leave ICU. This is the thing that kills 8 million people a year, folks. Even more than cops. In the following days, the two more patients who were seemingly destined to die of sepsis received this treatment. Twice more, the patients recovered. The treatment became standard for Dr. Merrick and his team began. Later, thiamine was added into the mix, as six patients often are sick patients are often deficit in thiamine. Thiamine helps the cells absorb vitamin C. Now, here's your synergistic effects. This is what I've been talking about, really looking at your like herbal remedies or even medications or even the interactions, the counterindications. You look at how things are interacting. You're dealing with a system in your body that wants to fix you. You have to understand what's working and what isn't, what's on the uptake and what isn't, what's blocking it, what isn't. This was a a really big observation here, clue for us, uh, that we have thiamine that uh, helps absorb the vitamin C, just like you saw in the other study uh, that we were talking about last week, that the the synergistic effect of, of, I think it was the THC helping the uh, lysine in through to, to, to connect up. These things work together, and if you don't have this stuff balanced or imp- or available in the proper form, the body can't do what it says. Even though you're taking vitamins and they're in the wrong place, the wrong form, they're not uh, they're not maybe precursors, and they need precursors because they need to do multiple step uh, cat- uh, catalytic changes. They won't work. Here's a direct proof again that you need to look for the thing, the enabler of the of the um, the causative uh, cure. So thiamine was added to validate the findings that many uh, called too good to be true. Dr. Merrick and his staff teamed up with scientists at Old Dominion University. The results confirmed. According to Dr. John Catravis, the interim executive director and Santara Santara Endowed Chair of the Frank Reedy Research Center for Bioelectrics at ODU. Next step future research across a larger patient uh, population. Uh, now, I want to stop. That's about the end of that. It goes on. There's a, I've got two more links. And the reason why I put more links is because I think it's interesting. There's different, slightly different information in each link that brings, um, 
uh, another a more comprehensive understanding of what's going on with this. And I was folk, and I can't remember if I can find it right now. But the, they do a little bit, more, and I think I hope I got the, the the link for it. it. They talk about this study that was done at this university, which apparently, as I see, is Gary L's alma mater. Thank you very much for being there. This is a you know a nice and cool thing to to hear from from there. That it tells you that the study that was done by that confirmed this actually explains what's happening inside the cell during sepsis. And I looked at that and I said, people need to really know about the way it treats the cell, how this is working, because there's something, there's a, disloca- there's a disassociation of certain cells during this condition that is thwarted and, and protected against. That I, I, The thought occurred to me, and i just leave this out as a conjecture, uh, that it might be that people that get anywhere close to this condition, and older folks or even folks, uh, that have um, uh, any condition in their blood might benefit just from uh, the way this works to re- reset up the, the, the cell, the, the structural integrity of the blood vessels. Uh, so anyway, I, I put these uh, these links together. It's up to you to go and read it. I could read all this stuff and go through it, I suppose. I'm not an expert on all this anywhere, and I guess we, we shouldn't be. I, I'm not knowledgeable in the science side of this. I just see how this thing works. Experience for me says that there should be some working. I'm not really promoting vitamin C like, uh, you know, oh, vitamin. look what vitamin C does. But vitamin C is very, very interesting, very important. And here, for those of the, the, those that need it, is a medical use counter to the way the medical profession would actually have allowed it and is being now developed counter to everybody who's a doctor most lots of people not everyone all the doctors are not too ha- they don't want to agree until there's these big long expensive tests which you know aren't probably going to happen i want you to know about it i want you to know why this thing works what it can do i've added another link here could the vitamin c save lives in sepsis these hospitals aren't waiting for the proof and so you may walk into a hospital that is waiting for the proof you need to go after it and I say that for a couple of reasons, and I think I'm one of the, you know, I'm an example of what of what I could have uh, had happen for me. Instead of doing antibiotics, when your antibi, this is again the folks and the problem. The antibiotics may be losing their effect. You need to have this alternative, and I don't think there's going to be any uh, ability for nature to combat this uh, this attack, uh, if you will, the mineral uh, supplementation of a depleted body to defend itself. Uh, the nature, the ne- negative nature. Uh, can't really protect itself in these cases. But this is another link I provided. The case for vitamin C treatment in sepsis gives us a list of cases uh, that were done if you need more proof. And I think this is important. You all need, again, this is another style of the black and white in your eyes. Get reading this stuff and understand and get beyond uh, being attacked by these people that would, would uh, these other doctors and things that won't say something and don't tell you about how uh, how things might be working. Uh, without getting too um, into it, I ran across another thing, um, and I'll just say it quickly without any more. I don't have links for this. If you have an ulcer, you need to get in the doctor, and you need to check to see if whether or not you have the H. pylori of bacteria in your gut. you got to get rid of it. Right now, there's only one treatment. I don't know if this vitamin C would work. You just want to get rid of that. That's what's causing the ulcers, and those ulcers can kill you. So... This is what also kind of got me thinking when I saw this uh, sepsis thing come up this week, uh, finally get to the point that you you got to understand, and, and the reason why I brought that point about this, the H. pylori bacteria is that the medical profession doesn't understand it or is against that fact up until just recently. Uh, because they didn't, there was no science behind it. But uh, this guy, uh, a doctor, and I don't have the story, you can find it, they found out that a bacteria caused ulcers. It wasn't spicy food and what you worry about. And so I've offered uh, you check for H. pylori. Well, it happened to be the in a condition like this where there was such such, a, such ulceration that it it caused a um, um, potential. Well, it could have killed uh, killed the who who the, the one who got it. I said check for um, they didn't check for the bacteria. It came back a second time. I said they didn't check for the bacteria. Well, come out to find out that the the medic the the, the, the hospital didn't or the clinic, whoever it was, didn't check for the bacteria. When they checked, they found it. And so this is the same kind of thing in my mind. You, you, there's things out there that even the, that's even within the medical profession that they know, but the medical profession is resistant to. So I wanted you to get these things. I think these are very, very important. When you hear like 8 million people dying and we see, uh, and then people die and they don't even know why they die. Uh, and let's say if, if it was the, the fact of 
uh, the uh, back, let's say the ulcer. Everyone thinks that they've eaten too spicy food. You don't eat spicy food. It has nothing to do with that. In fact, the spicy food was just pointing out the problem to, to let you know. So, uh, so the the meta, the way they brought they, I can't remember. I think they have a name for this treatment now. It's been now another year and a half in. More people at more hospitals are taking it on. Uh, they actually give you a little thing about what it is they're doing. Essentially, it's the vitamin C. It's uh, hydrocortisone and it's thiamine, and they tell you how much you're supposed to have so that you can take notes, and then you make sure if you if have know somebody that has this problem or might have it, folks, this thing will kill you in a few hours. One of these articles tells you that it'll ki- tell you, kill you and kill you dead in a few hours. There's nothing to mess with. Uh, so you need to be, if you find, you make the suggestion and they don't want to use it, you, you go in and you make sure that someone's uh, actually doing some care for people. And, and the bottom line on that is that, uh, you know, if you do lose a, a family member and they didn't do it and you make the record that they ought to, now you, you know, it's not going to save your loved one, but you're going to send them, you could do a, I guess you could do the lawsuit. You can make the claim that you didn't have a right to kill my relative and you don't have the right to do the next one. And so I'm going to sue you and make the record to stop that nonsense. You had at least one more option when there were no options. And partly that's how this Dr. Merrick did it. He went up to the point where there was no other options, and he said, he looked at the, he actually had to qualify that he was using vitamin C within the context of the medical, medical community's own agreeable uses for it, which means they use it. They just didn't like using it in this regard. So uh, he qualified that he was using it within the vitamin C guidelines of medical use, and uh, he was able to uh, avoid a pretty big thumping by the legalization system. Very important stuff to me. Uh, I hope you can understand uh, understand the, the importance to this uh, thing about how to counter the, these licensees that might might hurt you. Uh, you have to be pretty knowledgeable. You have to be your own doctor, if I can say it that way. You have to be your own caregiver. Don't again. You have to take responsibility. That's a that's a big deal anymore. But we have all the information we can have. We have the Sources like, I guess, myself, and just telling you about it, if you hadn't heard, uh, if nothing else, you now heard my uh, part of my uh, my anecdote uh, to you to say that th- there's some things here that need to be looked at if you didn't know better and no one's really speaking about it or condemning you for it. You come with a, you come with a better uh, word in your mouth. Well, it means your life is what I guess the point here is. Is, you know, so this is a do you do you give that over to somebody else? Do you let somebody else abuse them because they have Doctor Dr. in front of their name or or FUD after? Uh, so moving on, uh, how another thing to thwart, and this is on a more act, uh, environment. Um, env- <laughs> I can't even think of the term evolutionary engagement. Excuse me, why would I forget that evolutionary engagement action on the medical profession? Uh, where they are promoting pharma, uh, pharma harma, as I've called it in past broad- broadcast, uh, in- instead of some of these more natural uh, mineral and uh, vitamin-based uh, remedies. And hydrocortisone, was it a steroid? Is that I forgot to go look that up. Okay, maybe not not so natural that way, but it is in a way. It's just it's just pulled out and and put in a particular use. So uh, you don't have to uh, uh, run from it all. You got to find if you're going to die, find what works. And I don't like I to me. When they had to give me an antibiotic, even though I didn't really want to take an antibiotic, I was out of ideas. And so here we are. What do you do when you're out of ideas? You, you got to do the Hail Mary or you just do something that at least advised is advisedly supposed to work and you won't die from the treatment. That's the only other thing you look for. But what can we do against some of these uh, these uh, problems with pharma and these vaccines and the drugs that go through these, another way they go through the same resistance that was in the medical profession for some, using intravenous vitamin C and the hydrocortisone is the same problem we get with the revolving door in government and the licensee systems and all that. How, how do you combat that? An interesting and evolutionary engagement I saw in John Rappaport's uh, article, Shareholder Lawsuit, Delightful Weapon Against Drug Companies. The interesting point here is you might think about becoming a shareholder in a company and what they did here is they went after the the company's misrepresentation of drugs of what they did or how they did their tests or there's a whole lot of little a few things here that caused um, an adverse effect to the bottom line of the investment and they sued on that and they are now look they're going to have to answer to 
how they didn't violate these protocols for the test and promote wrongly to give more value to their stock and their, their shares. And then it was diminished. Uh, then you invest in and were diminished because of this action. The, sh- the minor minority shareholder or any shareholder in this case can sue to do that. So another evolutionary engagement and, you know, like people sue, you know, trying to sue from the outside. And people say, well, you can't get involved with the system and, and, and use the system. Well, in this case, if you don't get involved as a shareholder, you can't sue that way. So uh, evolutionary engagement. Maybe it's time for people to jump in where they can, become shareholders, read the, read about this thing, get John Rappaport's study or st- a report, look at what's going on, do some deep, you know, do your research, do your due diligence. And then go become a shareholder and put hold these uh, drug companies to account. I thought that was a pretty interesting idea actually well he's just saying that this happened i'm saying use this as a guidance that you can do it too for those of you that want that really have a a real proof about the problem of this have an understanding you can step up there now so we start out with vitamin c hydrocortisone and then we go about attacking the pharma that's no good for us it's a you know the bottom line is the problem here the shareholder you always find money usually involved but really what we're looking for is these simple things that uh Keep us healthy, and we're going to have to find these simple things. Here was another, and I, I'm not advising this, but I'm looking at this thing too. If you find out, as we look in the future, and we, you know, the prepper side of us is kind of always wanting to be prepared. Now, I, I'm not that fatalistic. I, I think they handle it pretty good how they bring us into into the stinking abyss. So, I'm not so fatalistic. It doesn't mean I don't have a a few containers of food uh, so, sitting around. And, and, and preparations, at least in the minimal sense, uh, just in case something gets difficult, that these problems like this vitamin C and hydrocortisone and thiamine in a, in, a, in a solution with an IV would be something that you can treat yourself, that you could probably get yourself when times get tough on something that will kill you in hours, has a potential. Gary L., if I read this right, makes the, um, makes the uh, observation that uh, I didn't, uh, it worked for me at the time with the, I guess the use of the antibiotics to stop my problem, uh, we'll just reduce it to sepsis and not, well, and a bacterial infection, uh, was because I hadn't used antibiotics before and that, that could very well be. So this is another, another angle. Be careful. Uh, well, you know, we're saying here it works, but in fact, we, maybe there was, a, uh, well, that was with the use of antibiotics. This, uh, this thing with the, um, Vitamin C, not not so much. That's a that's a kind of a clear that goes right through everything. So we have as a prepper, if you will, being prepared. And you remember, Gigi's boo was a nurse talking about doing that. I think they had a broadcast about being prepared to do that, uh, do being able to do IVs uh, for peep for yourself or others that, in times of trouble. The, the, understand this method can keep you uh, from getting sepsis, something or you or the one you love keep you from from dying from it, right? And uh, so, uh, homemade remedies in a way, if you know, kind of pay attention and keep it sanitary. Uh, lear- learn your biology class, or if you didn't know, maybe go to biology class and learn how to keep things sanitary, and then go at it with that way. Maybe med- your medical uh, might do it. Uh, me- medical, um, well, medical training won't do a couple techniques that the chemi- biology and chemistry will show you. But uh, anyway, so we got to do, we're looking for simple minerals or com- compounds or mixes or solutions that will help us. And so we we're all on the prepper side, and okay, here's another one coming, but it's on an interesting note for us, baking soda shortage. A lot of people at the uh, RLM uh, network uh, uh, are into understanding about baking soda, is apparently there's a shortage coming or on the horizon or uh, developed, uh, and this is in particular to maybe medical, but this could be a, an extended problem that I wanted you to call your attention to. Uh, the cartel combined with absurd government regu- regulations can look a lot like a doomed socialist state at times. In Venezuela, for example, there are shortages of food, toilet paper, medicines, etc. Pretty standard stuff, comrade. But in the United States, how is it possible that there's a, a shortage of sol- solutions of sodium bicarbonate? And so these are pharmaceutically created solutions uh, for bi- uh, sodium bicarbonate. And the, the, there's a cartel that Two, comp, two suppliers of it, that uh, the problem is for you, if you have to go to the hospital, you may not be in, have this stuff. that They may not have this stuff for you. They want it, but they may not have it because the suppliers are withholding it, or it can't be made fast enough for some reason. 
They go through a discussion. You'll go uh, see it in the link. We'll go through more. But remember, you got to have the stuff on hand. If, it, if the shortage happens, now you may not be interested in solutions, pharmaceutical solutions of sodium bicarbonate, but if you are having a problem with getting the right uh, the uh, quality bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate, you're not going to make what you need. You're not going to be able to have it. I'm not saying go out and buy a truckload of it. I'm saying understand uh, what you have uh, coming down the pike uh, that there, and understand that on the pharmaceutical side, it's absolutely controlled and down to a monopoly of two, which is probably the, limited, the minimum they could do without being a, a, obvious that it might be a monopoly. And that you're not going to get some of these medicines, notwithstanding all your knowledge, if you have to go there. Well, if there's a sodium bicarbonate, sh- sodium bicarbonate shortage, and it's uh, there's a certain way to make that for IVs, and you're into prepping to know that, you're going to have to know what uh, the the quality of, of of baking soda you have to have. You're going to have to have that on hand and make sure that it's it's uh, protected and have enough. So word uh, to the wise: those that can do that, or uh, those that are stocking up. Nothing hard to, it's not that expensive, just stock that up. Uh, here's another thing that uh, we were talking earlier, uh, just a quick comment about the being affected, being affected in a way that you're not going to be able to respond to your future. We talked, that's a theme that goes around the, bo- goes through the broadcast uh, periodically as I tell you, you know, whether it's going to be vaccines or your food or pharma or, you know, GMO or whatever, uh, all these chemicals, that uh, the, the epigenetic changes that they're doing to you. Uh, there's a study now that reveals Yet another reason to limit kids' screen time. I'm saying in the future, they want people that are not responsive. That's what I see happening right now. With all, all the adult humans, the adult animals out there, the male and female adult humans, you say they, are, they describe you as insects and bugs and other things and animals. You don't even see that they're doing that. But uh, you're going to be inc- incapacitated. You're in- incapacitated right now. If you won't stand up and take control of those things that you can, or work to get control of those things harming you and make them right, you're just as uh, affected already, and I think this is a uh, truth, uh, you're just as affected, and you're going to have to dig yourself out of this problem, and it's on your kids, uh, your little goats. The study reveals yet another reason to limit kids' screen time. Excessive TV watching may cause bone, uh, poor bone health later in life. Now, we go through a discussion. It's kind of interesting what it ends up being. As you look at your TV, I didn't see much difference between your cell phone and what the, everyone's kids, you know, they've been their head down, and they're also now finding out that they have a neck problem developing with kids who haven't used their cell phone. I guess no one can hold the cell phone up. Their arms are getting too fat and heavy. You can't hold the cell phone up so you don't put this giraffe neck on your on your body that you're not intended to have. Or that's maybe the design of the aliens to make you, vent, your body will be structured like an alien's uh, stru- uh, body is structured. They're, they're preparing you to go into space or something, I suppose. But here's a, a thing that says that if you watch TV, your bone health is no good. So now they, they, br- they bring you into this idea uh, or the, the, con- the physical limitation a- upon your little ones that they're not going to be capable physically. Uh, broken bones, easy broken bones, they're going to be more and more and more into non-activity. They'll, they, they scare you about going into the wild because there might be a wild bear out there. They scare you into the wild because something's going to happen and get you. Well, they're going to scare people from even going outside uh, because what it does is it depletes you. And the, the tools they use, the TV and the phones, make you wherever you are, you sit and you don't become active. If you look through this article, it says it seems to be the lack of activity is what is actually doing this. Notwithstanding what the, the what they call the boob tube is doing, making big boobs out of y'all, uh, and that's not the mammary type. <clears throat> and the thing that drives the world, if I understand uh, uh, Flash Droid about this, the uh, Flash Dork, the, uh, the, they're, they're just diminishing our capacity. And if I just saw that flick through the line, you know, it's the walking dead uh, and it's the uh, zombie kids. Okay, so this is what I've, tell, I've been telling you that they're doing this to you, doing to you to your kid, to your little one, your goats. Uh, they're going to do this to y'all, and I don't know what else to say. It's really that's what it is. So if that's what it is, and everyone's ignoring it, I don't know what to say more. But here's the study saying that how it happens is you let your kids watch TV too much. You you, you allow them on your smartphone too much, and they become inactive. This is what they find in space, too. If you, you can't get your bones, you, you can't jar your bones a little bit. There's no need for the body. The body's a miracle thing. It, do, it, it builds strength in, in the use. You, you don't use it, you lose it. And so here's part of the, the story of this. It's not just the fellow, well, look at the TVs making you dumb. It's that 
the study showed that the eventually the inactivity is what causes the problem. And it, they're talking about your little goats, the young goats. It works to diminish you and hurt you later. And if I look at the, what this is, osteoporosis, women have a terrible problem with this already. A sense attainment of optimal peak bone mass is a protective against osteoporosis later in life. Reducing sedentary time in children, those words of the government, may have long-term skeletal benefits. So there's more to read, more to see. It's This is the notice and the warning. They're, this is the, oh, To me, it's all, this is their notice to you, that this is what they're doing to you. And I, again, I people will want to fight me maybe and say, oh, I don't want to believe there's a war going on. Oh, it can't be that big a war. It can't be that integrated. That's a war against you right there. That's a notice that we are doing this to you. Now, you don't step up with your little ones and say, hey, out of here. Go find something to do. And maybe you have to look ahead because they haven't figured it out. You go find something. Have them something. Send them somewhere that they will have something to do. Preferably around your house in the, your, your yard with the way the world has also changed. But you have something for them to do that's activity-based. I mean, I can't, I'm just looking through all the, I can't even imagine being a kid, a little goat myself, and, and not have done climbing trees, falling out of them, throwing dirt clods at each other, building forts, digging trenches, the bicycle riding up and down hills, falling, you know, falling down all the time, doing something stupid, toughened you up, jumping out of trees, jumping out of second-story buildings, well, I saw this on the TV. I can, I can jump and roll. And we did. And even that, when I look back at other like historic mining works, those people back then, the miners of, of old, oh, man. I'm a weenie, big time weenie compared to the old guys. When you see the kind of work that was done by pick and shovel to just look for a little piece of gold. So we are degrading very quickly in our in our uh, capacities due to what we are given our place to plug in we give our little ones the ability to plug in even deeper and less capacity and less healthy and what does that what is that going to do but later uh, help the cradle to grave universal health system and put you into their control through all these chemicals that they put into you on top of it. When you have osteoporosis, how many theories are there about what you have and all the stuff you're going to get in order to combat it that then has a side effect that you're going to have to combat, and now you're into the, well, you're the, they're running you to death on their little uh, pharma hamster wheel. So the smartphones come up, and we have a reason to understand this is the plan, and it's working, and you're all helping it. So go ahead and put yourself underneath the, the, the spell of these smartphones, smartphone addiction, keeping you sedentary on top of it, smartphone addiction tightens its global grip. There's a story to explain how great the use of smartphones are in the world. And this, again, ties over to your global governance. This ties over to your data problems. This ties over to big data. This ties over to your financial, global financial systems, your cashless society. They're getting you to take the phone. You're taking the first hit of heroin. You're taking the first hit of meth. You're taking the bit of the drug that's going to trap you. And all the silent harms that come on you. You start taking this phone. And I have to tell you, I'm talking, um, I don't tell you how long I sit in front of this computer every day doing the combat that we're doing in paper, if you will, the, the communications, the study, that I can tell you my physical bearing is not near close like it used to be. I'm not dead yet, and I'm not crawling on the ground, but I'm not doing like I used to. Sitting around doing not much is not helpful at all. And so, and I, again, came from a pretty you know, sturdy place, and maybe that's why I last this long. But I can tell it's just the capacity. When you have to sit and be sedentary, it's just not the same at all. And so they want you on these phones on top of it for that. We see the study now. We see that it affects you later in life. All you all with osteoporosis, look at your activity in your life. Might it have been caused by maybe being a little bit sedentary. Maybe that's how you change it now. But then you're going to have to give your body enough nutrition to build the matrix of the bones back. It can be done. Even this late date, however old you are, actually, well, there's a certain point breakover point a little bit later, but and you got to have all the right mixture so the body can do that. 
So we have the, 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 the notice in front of us. We, we, they want us sedentary. You know, I just keep thinking, it's hard for me not to think about this. The Matrix, not a movie. When they get you all in the future, not wanting to move much, they just move you into a little pod. You're not moving much anyway. And then they lay you down. And then all of a sudden they got wires hooked into you. And the AI takes your energy. Pretty simple. And you're always working on a problem. You think it's the greatest thing since sliced white bread to work on a problem. You keep your mind on something. So keep plugging yourself into the smartphones. And you're watching this, a globe, everybody succumbs, I say everybody, but the globe is succumbing to this governance. Through, right through this device. Silent weapons for quiet wars. They know you better than yourself. It's what the protocols of the elders of Zion. They get you into your phones. They get you into being sedentary. They get you into looking at things that really don't need to be looking at. They get you doing the wrong stuff. And so what's the, the the police state, the big boot on your neck for the rest of your life, say? DHS boss says, stay in your homes. So the promotion's going out. You're sedentary anyway. We got you, fo- we got you connected to your phone. You're ours. So stay in your homes. It's dangerous out there. U.S. trained and Saudi-funded Wahhabis terrorists are lurking in the shadows, according to John Kelly, Trump's boss over at the Department of Homeland Security and former commander of the United States Southern Command. I was telling Steve Ducey on the way in here, he's from a Fox host, that if uh, if he knew what I knew about terrorism, he'd never leave the house in the morning. So, big narrative about how you should be afraid. Uh, the best The best way to combat that is to not be afraid and go out and start doing stuff and Stop taking your chain with you, that little phone. Now, I do have a problem. That phone is a lifesaver. Okay, so there's a good use for it. But where you don't have to, don't bring it with you. Do not let your little ones be lost in it. Somehow you're going to have to break their addiction to it because this is what they plan for you. They want you stuck in a place. They want you glad to be in a place. Oh, good. He told me to stay home. He's an authority. I'm going to stay home. I'm not going to do the bigger things in the world that that keep the republic, that keep my life uh, straight, that keep me from being threatened, that keep me allowing property, that keeps me to be able to do what I need to do, that allows me to make the wealth I need that's different than the system. The article goes on to talk to you about the the odds of being killed by a terrorist uh, are are minimal, 1 in 20 million. Okay, we can go through all that. It's irrelevant to me. They're, They're attempting to present the meme about you can maintain your sedentary life way life and we will provide it for you by making these these uh these presentations to you so we heard the 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 wahhabists were mentioned you have to understand this is what's coming out of Saudi Arabia and I don't want to get into all all the 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 lie and deception that's going on around all this and so-called Islam they're not they're just this this group that's just started up uh, but uh, you heard him mention that and then you heard Trump come out uh, While well, someone mentioning this on this re- this recent trip that they meant uh, that they w- made to the Middle East, where Trump went and saw the Saudis and Israel and uh, and met with the Pope, and you saw right there that uh, the the White House actually stated that they want to bring the, together the three major religions, uh, the Islam and Jew- Jew- Judaism and Christianity. But they mentioned Christianity and the Vatican. Well, uh, in my view, that's not. That's not the, that's not Christianity, at all, and uh, uh, Judaism is not the state of Israel, and uh, the state of uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is not Islam. It's it's Waha it's a Wahhabist uh, 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 flavor. So from that we get a story: Trump and Netanyahu to the world. We are all Wahhabists. Wahhabists now. We are all Wahhabists now. So this is a another complexion this is the political connection uh, on this and this is all a deception as well so we're watching a multi-layered deception of the promotion of what's going on we can go and read through someone's analysis of all this and they go on and on and on the point is that these are the messages that are coming down through this this visit i want to tell you uh, very get careful i want to remind you i guess tell you i want to remind you 2017 last year i did the report 2017, or was it the year before, I did the report that said in 2017 the treaty between the Protestants and the Vatican will be uh, done. The, the, what, September? That they, uh, this is a, a design to reunify the, the Catholic Church 
and to then now to then push and you remember we were talking back when when Israel Israel was sending ambassadors to the Vatican they're trying to pull these religions together but they're an adulteration as well that they're trying to be and create the universal church so this discussion we had about the Jesuit training people whatever their actual whatever they're doing however they look in the Trump administration fulfills itself toward this end in September as it all starts to pull together. Whether or not it's all fully pulled together is, is, is probably not going to be. That would go too fast. But they are making this set up right now, and there's a multi-layer a- attack going against us that I wanted people to just pay attention to. Uh, the message is here is that we are all now, with Trump embracing $110 billion of of military hardware to Saudi Arabia to go beat on and and destroy the Yemeni people at this point is Trump saying jobs, 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 which means that he wants to put people to work to build the hardware for someone else to go kill innocent people in their homes is the kind of jobs Trump is promoting. Means that they support Wahhabists, which are not Islam. Anything I've looked at says it's not. It's almost a fabrication, like the kingdom of Saudi Arabia seems to be a fabrication and allied and aligned with Israel, a non-state. Uh, so I just a lot of news came out in this issue regarding that trip. This is I wanted to point out the Wahhabist view is not Islam. It's not and the, going to Catholicism is not Christianity. And if you think so, go talk to the Orthodox Christians about that. And there's another, there's others as well about would tell you about there's something not quite right about all this. And then again, you can see that it's not uh, Judaism that's in Israel; it's Zionism. It's a political construct and other things that I talked a little bit before, and, and not in depth. There's much more to say, but here is the deception as they get us through and they start confining our lives. The DHS was a terrorism, remember? The terrorism group, because it all started up because of 9-11, where we found out that a majority of the people on the planes, given there were planes, given that they did what they did, were from Saudi Arabia. Did we all forget that? Have we gone so stupid we forgot that? S-T-O-O-P-I-D, for all of those sensitive, sensitive ears. Did we go stupid? Did you just see what happened right underneath our nose? And everybody was not only crickets, they were waving flags. I'm blown away. I'm just dismayed here. I don't even know what to say about this. It's so much to say. I don't even know where to begin. But the DHS says, just stay in your houses. We got you covered. You got your phones. You got Silo Weapons Quiet War. You got big data. We're all, we got you wired. You're wired and you're ineffectual. We're making the decisions for you, and I hear crickets. That we hear they're making it plans for you, and they make it up as they go, and they do it on an individual's uh, employee basis, TSA. Again, remember, this was all started because of the Wahhabist attack on 911, given that what it was. I can't believe any of all that. It doesn't matter. When they said the day changed, I said, why? And they, I said, but they're going to make it change because we're stupid, S-T-O-O. Uh, S T. Was that how do you spell that again? S T O O P I D. Yeah, we're stupid. We are so stupid. And why? Crickets. I, I'm stunned. I you know I start getting into this. I don't can't even think about it anymore. What is our problem? But TSA and CPB employees use their own judgment to decide who's a criminal or terrorist. Oh, isn't that just more what we saw at the memo of 210 that I went to crickets on in, what, 2012 or whatever the heck it was? In fact, I think that came up with Kim.com coming up on this Seth the Rich big problem. He, uh, now he's another. He's right in the middle of that again. All these guys get right in the middle of it. Snow job, Snowden's in on it. They're making a deal about it that needs to be made a deal about. That they're impo- involved is really amazing. And I said, he's now coming up. Well, look at what they've done. Look at all the, the, the FISA court. In fact, I got a story maybe coming up about that. FISA court came up and said that FBI didn't do it right. Oh, they're violating the Fourth Amendment. Like, that's the least of our, 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 our problems. And I sent back a Twitter back to him. I said, are you just seeing this now? They told us they went extrajudicial in 2010. I went to crickets in 2012, and now we all of a sudden, all the everyone sees now what's going on? And then you only focus on the, on the Fourth Amendment. 
you only focus on a Seth Rich. They're all important issues. What I'm saying is that they're just the 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 effect of an underlying cause, and it's our stupidity. It's our I don't know, all these words of non-action. Whatever you can think of, whatever excuse to not do something, you can use that word in the place of what I just said of not doing something that we ought to have been doing. And then I looked at this uh, situation where the TSA is now dictating your life. This is just in the TSA. Remember, you can fight this. There's that other guy with Jonathan Corbett, not James Corbett, Jonathan Corbett. He's on that. You might want to. I want to remind you about that on this point uh, about the TSA making decisions. That can be fought. Someone needs to step up there. I'm going to say it again. But they're making decisions for your life. And you're seeing what it is when the DHS comes to just stay home. They're saying just stay home. It's real scary out here. They created, it's the war of terror, folks. Remember that. And war of terror and so-called Wahhabists, we've always apparently been Wahhabists since someone took the tiller of the ship of state and decided they were going to take down, finally implement the takedown that was the notice that 911 was, or is. So the TSA makes individual decisions, and then we get this late breaker, a new GOP bill would make it virtually impossible to sue the police. The parenthetically, race soldiers. Do I need to read this? Uh, you can read it yourself. There apparently is the Back the Blue Act of 2017. Boy, rah, rah, USA, USA, USA on this one. Back the Blue, these criminals, these military occupiers are now going to get more protection. And you got to see how they're doing it. To be able to respond, I'm asking, here's another point of contention. You can jump in right now, start attacking. It's both from the left and it's both from the right. As we identified in 2013, both political parties are involved. Your destruction. They don't care how they burn the candle, which is America. Uh, the Republicans want to burn it from one end. Uh, the right, apparently, and the and the, uh, the Democrats want to burn the candle called America from the left. The point is that America is being consumed and destroyed and along with you because you're all crickets. And I know, you know, I'm, I'm sure that the, there's not a minimal limited listenership behind the woodshed. You don't want to hear that, right? I understand that part. That doesn't mean that it's, it's right to disregard it. Doesn't mean it's right to overly promote what I'm saying given you can, you agree with it. I'm not just here to agree with you. I'm here to show you this is moving in a continuum that we have to inter intercept and interfere with and stop. It's not about our agreement. You can totally disagree with whatever I'm saying as long as you understand this bill is going to come up. And they're going to give the, they already have qualified immunity. They're going to make it about impossible to be able to have you take some, uh, uh, make accountable uh, any any law enforcement. And, this flips the burdens of the government to make it worse on you, which is probably even the worst. They already have the thing overblown. It already is extrajudicial in the whole of the judiciary of the United States of America. And now they're going to make the occupier absolutely powerful in its soldier and enforcement, like the Lieber Code says it can do. Oh, you forgot about that one, didn't you? Where's Kim.com and, and Snowjob Snowden and uh, Green, Green Well, Wald? What, where are they on this point? Where is anybody else on this point? This is moving right along the track. You can be just perfectly to take everybody out in a military consequence. And what we get is memes. Uh, the boot on your neck for the for your uh, for eternity. That's the, your view of the future that we got from what Orwell or somebody uh, Huxley or whoever the heck it was. That's the view of your future. The boot on your face, and we sit crickets to it, and we see exactly how they're doing it to us. And we don't take comment one against it and become persistent on that one. I can't imagine why we wouldn't want to. Uh, you all, uh, regardless of whether you feel that you can interact or not, you need, do need to make a, a, a loud voice about uh, being against the unaccountability of the police force. It's really a military force in this country called the United States of America. Uh, I realize that if you look very carefully at your constitutions, I'm having a uh, little bit of a dialogue on my, uh, not now, but you know, before the broadcast a, a little while ago, how, how where we have a, a right, where those, some of those constitutions that you go read in the states, every man has a right to a remedy for harm done him, how that plays against this. 
tells you that they don't care about it, and maybe you don't live underneath that standard, and you're going to have to assert it. You're not going to do it by sitting back and not responding to this. I'm trying to explain how it's coming at you so you have a better idea and quicker, be quicker to move against it. This is even aside the, the, the globalist approach. This is a part and parcel to it, but it's also different and distinct because we come through a different set of authorities this way. I don't show you uh, the globalist agenda this side. I just say, look, you have certain things that are taken away from you, and they can do that over time, just like it says in international law for occupying forces. And I either get crickets or I get people to uh, send me a bunch of guff without support. I don't mind the guff if you got some support, but it's really just statements and hollow. It's again like what the echo chamber uh, of ignorance. In fact, uh, I think it was James Corbett. I was not shocked. I guess at some point it's my criticism of some of these guys. Uh, he finds out, oh, it's what he knows about Glass Deagle wasn't what he thought he knew. And yet you've heard exactly what was going down all the time I've been broadcasting about that. What? Why are these? These gurus coming up now to find out that they didn't have it right and they fix it. That's great. You can fix it. But they make it sound like it's their, that they've now, that's their revelation. What, what is this nonsense? That means that for all these years you didn't quite see what was going on and you couldn't put that perspective, that piece of the puzzle into your, uh, into your thought process. You, you get involved with all these narratives, that they were, all these framed things instead of looking at what the supposed, what's supposed to be happening. I, I'm trying to set that out and make it the principle that you stop doing it that way. But it, that means you're going to have to step up to do something, somewhere. Now again, I said it's a target-rich environment. And here's the point. You live in an occupied territory. We know they're lying to us. It's trying to figure out and confirm how, why, and that it's happening. Uh, and it's funny, once we get the answer, we shut up and go back. We, we don't do nothing about it. Explosive revelation uh, of uh, the unqualified one. That was Obama, remember? He's still unqualified. Administration, illegal surveillance of Americans. Now, this ties in to showing about the election tampering. This ties in about the Trump-Hillary uh, thing, uh, about all that. It shows the Russians couldn't do it. It says all that stuff. We, we, we get out now how... The Obama administration was illegally surveilling Americans. Do you think anyone's going to pay for it? When you see that no one pays for it, you better tech, sit back and then think about what that means in the context of where do you think you live? And how do you think the future is going to look? I think it's going to look a little bit like the bottom of that boot. These people are criminals in office and we need to bring back the accountability. And I won't even go there again about how you do parts of that, and, and then more of us pulling together on that will make that work. I only hope, you know, I think about this stuff, I only have so much time to talk to you. And in some regard, it, you know, I get back on, I'm, I got a little thing in my craw this week. None of you cared. Well, okay, the handful that went and listened to the broadcast, I don't know what you did with it after that, but none of you went back and listened to the first 45 minutes. I'm not asking you either. I'm just saying I laid out some things of another way to approach our problems when when people that are farmers and people that have property and rights and you think you have a right, how you address the attacker that looks like they're the government or comes under the color of government. And I saw hardly anybody go on to say, wow, you need to hear this and hear how this works. And even if you had a contention, you didn't do it and then send me an email. Why is that important? Because I'm asking for evolutionary engagement. It has to be the right engagement. You bring me a bunch of solid research that says I'm a, a, a pipe dream on this, uh, that it's not the way I'm saying it. I need to hear it. But nobody does that. Nobody. Explosive revelation, Obama administration illegal surveillance. Like we couldn't figure that out. But here's the proof. See, you get it out of their statement. Got a couple of discussions on this. I don't even know what else, to, what more to say. I could read this stuff again. I want to do some, some basic analysis. I don't spend that much time. All I need to know is it's happening. We got the proof. Here's the evidence in your hand that things are going wrong and bad, and you need to stop it. Otherwise, it it comes bad on you. They're going to get to the point where they can. The cops are literally going to kill you and kill you just because you looked at them wrong. Because they learned how to say they were threatened, and now they'll just say, I was doing a lawful work. I was doing my job. That's all they need to say now under this new legislation. And they can shoot you dead, just like I said was going to come down. You won't be around to fight. 
That's why I said you got to back off of trying to be, not just avoid these people, you have to intercept what they can do to you. This bill is going to take some of that away from you uh, after the fact, but you have to go back in and stop it. I don't know what the real answer in all that is. If you don't do it, you contend with me that, oh, that's going to the system and trying to fight the system. If you don't, you're a dead man or woman in the future. If not you, you're little ones. And if you got none of those and don't care, then I don't want to hear your complaint. I don't have any future coming. I still have a care. And to tell you the truth, as I look at last week's response, I don't know why. It's just important. It's impotent. It's just impotent. Obama Intel. What's inside your computer, folks? What they tell us? What's inside? Did another broadcast about that. What's inside? Intel. Obama Intel Agency secretly conducted illegal searches on Americans for years. Is another story you can get. They're all over the place. You can read about it. My point about these reports is not even the best report you might find. What I found in the time I could research gives you clues that you can use as evidence to go after these people. That they conti- they stop this nonsense and you point out the war of terror being waged against us in battlefield America. That they told to us back in 2010 that should have been no question for the likes of people like Snow, Job Snowden, uh, Assange, those are the other side, Assange, uh, Kim.com, notwithstanding he's down in New Zealand, they want to start talking to meddling in the United States of America, they better know what's going on and speak to that up front. Not come as Johnny come lately, oh, look at how they look at, oh, look at the, 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 the criminality in the system. That reminded me of that Monty Python. I'm oppressed. Leaked documents reveal counterterrorism tactics used by at Standing Rock to defeat pipeline insurgencies. If you didn't think we live in Battlefield America, you ain't being listened to for what? How many, what, half a decade and more behind the woodshed? And I told you about this pipeline thing. I said, and I told you before the pipeline thing, you can't go out and do these types of, uh, they've got it set up against us. It's the writings on the wall with all their documents. You can't go out like you used to. The way, and then you can't be led by the nose by these attorneys, these bar members. And the Standing Rock was exactly that, and I got vilified. I have nobody in those people that are contacting me, never contacted. They won't listen to me now. They're all pissed off at me. Excuse me. Wait a minute. P-I-S-S-E-D is not a four-letter word. I think I'm still right. And it's a contraction, too. So, they don't care to do it right. They don't care to make their records. They care to submit themselves to these military op- private operators in the government that use the internal or the of internalization of the government against us in the public public private partnerships. Leaked documents reveal counterterrorism tactics used at Standing Rock. I even got into it. I said, "Well, how can we counter the counter tactics? How stupid are we to, to think this is a puzzle we can solve?" I gave every reason why you shouldn't do this. Now the documents come out to say. I was absolutely right to say, tell you not to be there. If you're not there, they can't pull this off. If you're where you need to be, they aren't going to be there. And then, then if, if you know to do this, then you have them there on your terms. Where is there? Wherever you can call them on the carpet or to account, even if it doesn't follow through. Do you know what? how many thousands of Indians and, and supporters were at Standing Rock? You know how many, though, every one of those doing something different to pull these people to account, uncover this stuff ahead of the time? Do you know what damage they could have actually done ahead and not got themselves beat up, not got themselves thrown in jail, which was part of the plan? Not, not actually made something. Now they're complaining about some oil leaking. I told you, you got to do it different. What? Vince Easley was telling us about that work as a pipeline place or a worker. So, no, they don't put those things in right. I told you how to solve that. You didn't even do that much for yourself. So here it is, folks, the leaks. The leaks telling you you live in an occupied territory. They're going to use these techniques against you. And if I'm, I've been telling you, if you don't come up to speed on that, they're going to defeat you every time. And look what happened. Look what happened. Why uh, am I vilified, or why am I disrespected, or why is it imputed to me that I hate everybody that was involved in that, or I don't support them? I couldn't have supported the right cause more. But see, that's the thing I have actually stated. 
I don't know if they were pushing the right cause. Why? Because in the first article we found, it was, it was, it was promoted by an earth justice attorney. And I said, those people with our experience are going to take these people down. And they did. And nobody learned anything. And apparently we're having apparently leaks. I don't know how accurate. And they, the one the one leak I found out was they actually the containment did work. So you couldn't even complain about that. It didn't reach into the ground. It was actually within secondary containment. And I think they had a tertiary containment. Point is that you have to have some valid stuff to bring. And you got to do it. You can't do it out in the street. I told you don't go out and riot in the streets anymore. They're setting you up. They're now you're now insurgents. That's all they need. I told you all about that. I'm actually frustrated again when I start thinking about it. I'm asking you all to change the way you approach the problem. If you are going to be active, make yourself active in a in a positive way. I don't mean because you're out there arguing or, or, or flying a flag. I mean in a positive way to cause the change you actually need to see, and it's away from the occupation that treats you as an insurgent and treat you as some enemy combatant that you've already been called you are back in 2010. You, you aren't listening. It's not me saying anything. It's not even what I suggest about the administrative process going through that dapple. It was that they already treat you as as at least misdemeanants to start with through Patriot Act. Then they took away the judiciary. They went extrajudicial. You will not have a judicial process, which means that we're no longer in a constitutional republic, and you keep going out and doing your First Amendment right to protest instead of going back inside the system where they can't get you. Be respectful and do the, pass the example of respectability and principle a, a thousand times over against them by each one of you doing it right. Put the heat to them. Why is that so hard? Why? Because you're a herd. No matter where you go, it's it's in you. It's it's how we do things. And silent weapons of quiet wars will keep you hooked in, and the protocols of Elder Zion will keep you connected uh, by your own uh, ignorance of your own self. They had people infiltrating, which we, I mean, it's all predictable. They did it at Malheur with the Bundy situation. The the government and everybody and all kinds of agents inside there. So if you're not there, they can't do that. If you're somewhere where they're only by yourself, but you're working in a pseudo-organized position, in other words, you see a wrong you can prove is wrong that you want to make right. Someone else sees a slightly different one, but you both know you're each going after the same thing, but on a different point. You can help magnify what your leverage is, and you don't work together as a group. You have a purpose. The purpose is to bring something about. And there's a certain way to do that. And I don't mean certain in the way that there's one way. There's a focus of the remedies that you have to focus on that are the way that does it, that makes it in a way when you're done, everybody sees it. You either do that or you do nothing. And I mean, you either do that and prove your worth in your claim, or you don't have one, which is my criticism, the whole DAPL thing. And partly of it was driven by that earth justice attorney. Well, we know they can't win. She said, I told you that, right, the first broadcast. And I knew why. She knew why. But no one else wants to listen. Now we see that they set you up. And they set you up. And they made lots of money behind the scenes. You all got hurt. But they made lots of money. What it's all about. Public-private partnership. The plunder destroy your life. And the military, they call it the police. The military is involved. And they treat you like a military operation. And the people that are doing the private-public partnership company, uh, like Blackwater, only a different name, promote that aspect in you. I saw that coming. I told you don't do that because I saw that coming. Don't be there for them to call you that. And what'd y'all do? Yes, I'm back behind the woodshed. I'm putting some lickings on y'all. Make the switch, folks. It's coming. You got to do some work in you. I don't have a judgment. I have no judgment in my mind right now about any of you. You either change it or you're going to be continually treated like this and lose every time, every time. And all the energy and the waste of energy and the waste of time and the waste of life and the potential harm. And then you set it up so that you can be attacked after, like you saw at Malheur. Years later, they come with charges and you're all by yourself. They cannot do that when you follow what uh, my plan is. They can't do it. They might do it, but then you got the record to show that's what they're doing it for. 
You don't have that when you're on the back, the front end of a water, on, on the receiving end of a water cannon, right where they wanted you to be. Now let's move that that constraint and control on you by your own action over to the same thing, different different uh, dimension, different uh, forum uh, with the control that's set up for you that you heard on into what's offered to you in this uh, blockchain idea. I know a lot of you are supporting it. Don't maybe don't like what I'm saying about this, but uh, I see that I see the benefit, but that's not where it was planned for to do, and it's not being protected to do that. It can't be in some regard, and here's how we got that. All your your whole your whole existence, your monetary existence, your property tracking existence is putting being planned to be put in blockchain so they can do it globally. And we just now have with all these exposures, U.S. law enforcement have spent hundreds of thousands on Bitcoin tracking tools. For those of you in the minimum that said, oh, it's anonymous. And then you gave that up and you said, oh, well, they can just track a little bit. It's just accounts. I asked last week and I haven't yet got an answer. It's kind of, it was late, so I didn't really kind of expect it. There wasn't many people responding in the chat uh, last week. Could they make a malware? Like you heard of this other malware that came through that infected so supposedly infected so many people that seemed to disappear off the radar real quick but um, can they put a malware that actually went after bitcoin accounts i haven't yet got an answer quite yet but i don't see how why it's not possible that you're you go to this cashless society the the, the things that you gave the phone you have the thing that's just de- de- destroying your health because you become sedentary you're not using your mind clearly and they get you c- controlled and they do all these uh uh, they set up the system behind that they're controlling that you don't know about, and if you do, it's months later. They do this to your cashless society. The blockchain can be pretty overwhelming, with criminals moving their funds through a string of addresses before finally crashing them out, cashing them out, <laughs> yeah, crashing them, cashing them out, presumably to deal with an issue. Several U.S. law enforcement agencies, presumably to deal with that issue. Several law, U.S. law enforcement agencies, including the Federal Bureau of Investigation, uh, the uh, DEA, and the Immigration of uh, Customs Enforcement, have all paid for software from Bitcoin tracking company Chain Alysis, according to the public records, with one purchase order being signed just this month. Uh, enough said. There is technology to keep at least this stuff tracked, to keep it checked out. To keep it uh, going on, I can't see how they can't find wallets and and have a malware that just takes you out and you plug yourself in and they now control that scenario. They, they control when you start seeing the story of the one that what they did and went through about the um, uh, what was it the um, the feds uh, and and Standing Rock and you see how they start doing that. And you see that the feds admit to anti-terror mass surveillance with tools to catch undocumented waiter. One guy, they figured, they tracked him down. And you think you can walk into a financial system which is being promoted. It's another story. A new financial system is being born. And they already have the ability to track that. And you think it's this oh, li- uh, liberty-minded thing? I think you're you're. I don't. Are you whistling Dixie? I mean, they're taking all those statues down. Are you whistling Dixie? Is the South really going to rise again like it ought to? There's a principle in there, and we're losing it. U.S. private firms continue to fill the gaps for digital investigators over bo- blockchain. A new financial system is being born using blockchain. The Bitcoin. Again, I guess you can have lots of different blockchains. Different, they have different names. Now, as I predi- I told you that this they're going to make the inducement to block Bitcoin. Now look at the price of Bitcoin. People are in on it. They want to get more. They want to make money. Now, now you're hearing the reports. What the dollar vigilante made a killing or something? Oh boy, that's going to get all the anarcho capitalists running into that to try and figure out what they can pull off. You just get a steam of of utility out of it, and that's what starts to create the fabricated value, and you did it, and they've been building a system behind the scenes that they have all the connections to get into your into your your face whenever they want, determine whatever they want you to do, because they make the determination. They are going to be immune from making that determination, and they say, well, you plugged in anyway. 
you knew we made you, we, whatever we talked to you, we say you are an insurgent. Of course we have to watch you. And I heard crickets on all of this stuff. In fact, I hear people embracing it. I don't want to really hear about your consent and voluntarism anymore. You're doing it in spades. Or, the most insidious one, they're doing it to you and you say nothing. That's the bulk of, I think, the argument right now about, well, how the issue of oh, the straw man, and it's like you think that by identifying that, that, that makes you immune. I've told you how to make that work for you. And you say, well, how's that work for you? Well, it works pretty good. It puts everything in a big, at least a stalemate. They can't come beating down on you when they find out that they're the ones that did this in a fraud to destroy the, ju- the denial of justice and uh, inside even their constraint of a lack of judiciary because you point out that as a military, they couldn't do it that way. And if you've protected yourself somewhat, they can't come and find you like I've told you. What happened when I tell you the, the anecdote about the Forest Service and knowing that if they give you, if you give an address where they can find you, they'll come and beat you up. Oh, so you don't, you learn not to give them that darn address. You find a location that's not in the state, so-called, a term, in the state. Now they can't find you, and you still get to communicate with them. And so what was the anecdotal statement to you? The Forest Service Ranger, after they wanted to come after us, oh, we've been looking for you. There was the answer, folks. You have to set yourself up so they can't find you, and you're right there in their face. Now you start to see what the fiction is that's going on, or at least I hope you do. This is Bitcoin. This is that system they have for you. This is the system in place working against you already, just like Dapple. This is what I've, why I've told you to stay out of the streets and go. go. Anytime you see something happen in the streets and it's a, a movement, it's the wrong place to be. I've told you that, too. Don't go in the streets. You've got to go into the system of the people that are harming you under color of authority. And I've told you, once you can figure that out for yourself, you got them in a crime, acting in a crime. To me... And you're a moving target, and you're all by yourself, and there might be a thousand of you. That'd be my that'd be my utopia, even to see a thousand people doing that. And they can't find you and get you. And you're still mobile, and you're still active in the system, causing trouble. And a bunch of y'all working together on your own little point is going to be like um, a hornet's nest coming, being disturbed after them. And you're going to teach them, don't stick your stick in my hornet's nest. And we're going to come from all over the place from all different angles because we all are different and we can come up with our own ingenuity on what we think is wrong and it's a not a right, what you've done. I'm getting kind of excited here. It's a frustration and an excitement. I'm frustrated more people aren't seeing and doing what I'm saying. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to pass it around. They want to make excuses for it. And yet I see everywhere we've done that, it, it's like, wow, it slams these, face, these people right in the face. They're not going to put no boot on our face. Another boot might come up our uh, keister, but that's another point. That's a different issue. That, must, that just means we didn't have enough enough coverage. But that boot's not coming on our face. I can tell you all it's coming on yours, whether you want to agree to it or not, or whether you want to deny it or all that. You're plugged into the last few stories that I've been telling you on how that works. You are You right now have that boot on your face, and you're just making an excuse that you don't. We talk about big data was going to be even more dangerous than this other thing with the government. I can't remember what it was the, the fact that they track you, that good, uh, big data was going to be worse. Google is about to start tracking your offline behavior too. Big data doesn't stop now with the Internet because it's all tied to electronic machines. The offline ends up going some to a contact point on the grid of the da- big data mesh. It's no secret that Google already monitors users' online shopping activity, but now it will follow them out of their homes and keep a close eye on every interaction they make. Isn't Why doesn't that sound the same as what happened with the new evidence of Standing Rock? The public-private partnership of a privateer coming in, looking at you as the enemy, and we're going to make, and we're going to beat you. And we need Intel. What's inside, folks? Go look at the side of your Intel computer. What's inside Intel? They got to you long before they got to. They, they even told you about it. Google is going to come offline wherever you have electronic purchase. They're going to be tied in. How they do that is beyond me to really understand how they did that. This has to be some big, monstrous agreements everywhere. There are some key places they must have learned to go get. Maybe it's the maybe it's the um, uh, and their money it was big money in this one. 
the credit card aid, uh, the credit rating agencies would be one of the places I would think. Everything you do online is attached to an account in a place, and it's tied through this system that they could probably pay money to get your data, like you would pay for a satellite imaging uh, from a private satellite company to pay to give you high resolution photos. Google is going to search, keep you track of you offline. Remember, don't forget about the little phone you got that's got the beacons too, folks. If you aren't understanding that they're telling us we are wired into this already and you are asking for it, there's your voluntarism. And yet you won't turn around and like I was, li- I don't want to get too critical of Jerry Day. I think he does good work, but he focuses us on that meter on the wall. He doesn't focus on how it got there. Same thing here. You focus on this, these things, and you're going to forget how it got there, and you're not going to address the enemy that's done that. That treats you as an enemy already. As I keep telling you, historically, in the last even 15 years, you have been presumed. Remember, under uh, uh, the NDAA extrajudicial indefinite detention, it was determined by a bureau rat. What do you think the TSA agent notice was? A bureau rat makes that decision. This is so already systemic, it's uh, really scary at some level. So, big data and the control of information. you got Google going to every aspect that you will tie into the grid. Wherever you tie into some electronic device, you're connected. That's it. Online communication. Twitter suspends WND for Seth Rich story. Seth Rich story came up this week. In a big, big, big way. It outs, uh, starts to focus on the DNC. This is where Kim.com back up, but stepped back up. He did telegraph that he had inside knowledge without saying he had it for sure, but he's now come out to say, listen, Seth Rich murder needs to be investigated. There's now showing out how they've, the government has avoided that like the plague. And now, uh, to his credit, Kim.com has added, said, I'm going to give you a statement that gives you some, enough probable cause to go research, to search, to uh, do an investigation. Uh, someone stepped in. There's a big dynamic going on. But because of even the discussion of this, Twitter is said to have suspended, and they got some, I think they got the pictures on this. Uh, yeah, the, the accounts. I think they just show you just a notice from Twitter uh, that the, the, you will not be able to be talking about this stuff. So censorship of big data control is in those private, public partnership things that have been allowed and built up around you. The walls have been built up around you, transparent to you. That they can then now stifle your speech. Now, I know there's ways around it. That's not my point. This is not my point about how creative you are to get around it. Is that you will have to, is number one, if you have enough knowledge and if you're able to stay ahead of those that start to, well, you make, your, make yourself known, that, to, that they, they, you become a target for them. And I um, I don't know where all that Seth Rich goes. I'm surprised there hasn't been more of a flood. They, they're doing a White House petition. Kim.com is promoting a White House petition for that. Uh, to me, that's I don't have much value in that, actually. People didn't need a petition. There should have been however would have signed the petition now engaging the police department, engaging the government why they're not investigating it on these things and getting an answer why, demanding an answer. In mass, individual people, just people, men and women on their own. Oh, okay, I see this is going on. I want, I want you to tell me. You're a representative to this government that's supposed to be a representative to us. We see a problem. We see an injustice, whether you see it or not. I want to know about you because I'm gonna. I have a right to remedy against your position. You're in malfeasance of office. Wow, then the locals around, let's say it's I think it was Baltimore or Washington, what is it, Washington, D.C., I guess it is for Seth Rich. Now you've got malfeasance on the officials. The people that are there now are the closest ones to do it. They do that. They do that there so that you, across the country with the sentiment to want to know justice, you can't do that so easily. You've got to have people you'd contact there to do this. And they become the pit bull all over that thing. Well, start chewing stuff up and not talk bad about pit bulls. You become the pit bull. And you leave the little lovers to us that, that understand them a little better. Remember, pit bull's not a breed. I know why people can't get this. It's a terrier mix. It's a terrier um, branch 
breed. It's not a pit bull. And you can throw anything in a pit bull. Even a losing dog can be a pit bull. Anyway, uh, they're dogs. They're, they're capable. There's no doubt. They're a special, there's a special handling of those dogs, but uh, they're not for everybody. But you get the right, you, most of them are right. When they're right, you make them right. They're lovable, lovable beasts, I guess I can say. They will definitely do a job. And you need to take note of that, and you need to become at least that, that intended against in protecting yourself or protecting somebody else. That's why I refer to that notice. That everyone knows pit bull, but it's, there's a quality in that dog when they're cared for is really remarkable that we all need to become part of that. We need to go out and do what we need to do where we can. We need to, if we're at a distance, we need to make connections with the people that are closer. And those people need to step up to be made available to do that. So we have a, this big data becomes relevant in our lives as it has been. There's nothing new here. And so we'll go through a couple problems, but uh, again, about how you can innocently get involved just quickly on uh, your, uh, in your electronics. And my point about this is not about that you get hacked or whatever. It's the fact that you're going to have your whole life and your future life is on these electronic devices. And you're not in control of that. Not only the property you're in your hand called the device, nor the software in it, nor the, the control of that. But to beware, subtitle files can hack your computer while you're enjoying movies. Do you watch movies with subtitles? Just last night, I wanted to watch a French movie, so I searched an English subtitle and downloaded it to my computer. Though the film was excellent, this morning a new research from Checkpoint scared me. I was unaware that a little subtitle file should, could hand over full control of my computer to hackers while I was enjoying the movie. So we have things that are we're susceptible, vulnerable to that we don't have a clue. It's just these simple little users on the on the internet that can affect other parts of your life. Your your weak link is these big data connection points that people exploit. Now I think this was the this was the one where it's the um, uh, uh, the for, uh, VLC player. KODI, Cody Player, the Popcorn Time Player, and the Streamio. I think that at least the VLC may have already had a patch for this. The point is, these programs you put on your computer can be gateways to exploitation outside of your knowledge. And so you start relying on these. I want to. I guess I'm cautioning you off. You, you're absolutely getting plugged into big data. These things are hackable to a, seriously interfere with your life. We're not quite to the point where we're that integrated yet. But that time is really shortly and quickly approaching us that we will be or will be out or we're gone. I mean, as I say before, there's a few of us that are going to go a few more, maybe a decade or two, maybe, maybe, maybe two decades if we're real unlucky. If I can look at the way this thing's going over the cliff and I don't want to be here. On the other hand, I'm going to be real disappointed. We make, we turn the corner. We actually start making some. I want to be here a few more hundred years. I want to see where we, how we actually did that. That won't be for me. But they're going to wait for all of us to be done. Uh, those of us that are in, integrated, like uh, below 50, are are going to be toast, completely vulnerable. Newly uh, newly uh, found malware uses seven NSA hacking tools, where WannaCry uses two. Eternal Rocks Worm. I guess you know I could read, read, read. The point is, is we're vulnerable. You get all the links. You can find this on the blogcast for those that you will go look. Uh, I don't, again, I don't want to read it. Uh, this uh, this WannaCry ransomware. Uh, it's left the the news news sphere, the notice sphere. Now this new one pops up. If you don't know your technology, you are vulnerable. You see the government telling you, stay home, use your stuff, be plugged in, stay that way. We don't care that it's physically taking you out. You're going to gain osteoporosis. We're, our bottom line will be fine on that. We'll just give you a drug for it and drug you out anyway. Now we give you virtual reality. You can stick duct tape your phone, uh, the, the display of your phone to your eyes and go walking through the world and find your little pets that you can collect up from here and there. Give us your stuff. Don't become active. Be sedentary. Don't respond to us. And here's your life. And you say thank you very much. Is this next real world problem that starts to happen if you think that Bitcoin, these digital data, big data life, 
Uh, see, we're in an interim time. The big data can't be controlled. I've just told you how they're, they're working on that, and that it's already possible and probably happening, and, and they're just waiting. They just sit back and wait for when they want to control it and when they want to take possession of it. In real world, you have physical things that can be interfered with. We're getting, I told you, this, this nation called Greece uh, was uh, the example of what austerity is, what control will be, what it's going to be, that jack boot th- uh, over, your, over your face for the rest of your life, what they do to your va- life unexpectedly. Well, it's not so unexpected, but that you have no control over otherwise to develop a collateral or secondary parallel universe for yourself. Greek authorities to launch mass confiscation of safe deposit boxes, securities, homes in tax evasion crackdown. So homes is a tax home. You call your home, you think it's your hearth? No, it's a tax home. These are terms. So tax homes are in evasion. This is what the tax homes have. They have these things called safe deposit boxes, securities, and and other things. And you say, but wait, that's mine. No, that, that's, that's the facilities that you've then signed your signature card over to have this happen to you. But Greek authorities will, under these, this evasion, tax evasion crackdown, another bureau rat in position, whether it happens or not, you're presumed to have to be because none of you understand what I'm talking about, about making the record that they didn't, for at least for us in the United States of America, didn't do, do, provide due process before when they made the felonious care defamation upon you about being a taxpayer, a person liable in an activity with a home where they've ordered you to keep your records and make your make your books and keep your records. Does that all sound familiar to those of you that read the tax code? Larkin Rose? Maybe you should have started there instead of your section, what, 861. No judgment. This is how we're hurting ourselves. Greek authorities launch massive mass confiscation. You don't think that the that the governmental authorities, when you're under Bitcoin, is going to do the same thing or any other digital of uh, digital condition? And don't you think that they would have the hackable side, to all the tools in order to come in and Make that so. That's right. Keep plugging into that system. This is the real system, that your fiction. This is their fiat system. It's tangible. You've got to go down and do this. They can do this with the real. They certainly can do that with the, with the virtual, the big electron that they got you plugging into that you, none of us really understand. Are you getting, I'm pausing here. You're getting it, folks. I mean, what does this mean for us? I mean, you're going to roll over. Oh, it's too much. I can't think about Oh, my head hurts. You make my head hurt. I see that all the time. Fun, but that's not going to help us. I got you. If your head's hurting, you're not doing enough. Because what happens when it's really working for you, your head, literally, your brain feels like it's flopping around in your skull. That's not a joke. If you ain't doing enough to see and research all the right stuff and pull the stuff together to have your brain feel literally like it's flopping in your skull, you ain't done enough. You don't really have the place to talk. I have to. I guess I would have to use that as a judgment. Those that talk without having that experience haven't done enough. Maybe that's why I found. I maybe sound a little bit out there, but I sound sound consistent and you know good enough. Well, it's reasonable. Oh, it sounds right. Moving on. So the government is going to give itself, again, this is a military operation in your life. They call it, you know, Battlefield America. We're in the battlefield. I told you that was, that was Libra Code gave us the knowledge. The indefinite detention told us there's no law, extrajudicial. Justice Department announces the National Blue Alert Network. So now they're going to get hooked up. You're not. The Justice Department, along with the Federal Communications Commission and the Department of Homeland Security, the same guy that said, you stay home. It's very dangerous out there. Today announced the nationwide rollout of the Nation, National Blue Alert Network. How convenient with this new legislation. Including newly developed li- deliverables and federal interagency cooperation to enhance the safety and support of American law, official, law enforcement official, officers. Not you. Under implementation of the Office of Co- Community-Oriented Policing Services, COPS, where we heard that before. I told you, Community Policing Community care, all those community things, where the destruction of your uh, right, uh, life underneath what rights you thought you had. This is what it's coming to. This is a global imposition, actually. And it's coming through federal. I want you to understand the federal appropriations of funds to the state's problem. And that means that you're subject to the federal. You have no state's rights. 
No, on the surface. And you'll have no states rights for the most of y'all who don't even know how to start to approach this. You get what you gave, and that's going to might be a bullet to your head, and your family's not going to be able to have any rem- remedy for that, notwithstanding what your constitution says that you have a right to a remedy, because you don't live in that state anymore. The National Blue Alert Network promotes rapid dissemination of information to law enforcement, the media, and the public about violent offenders who have killed, seriously injured, or posed an imminent threat to law enforcement. All you all. Or when an officer is missing in connection with official duties. Like when he's uh, stooping uh, your teenager in the, in the ru- at the school. S-T-O-O-P-N. Uh, enough. I'm going to read more. I'm enough of that. They're organizing up to take away everything and make it easier for them to do so and make a very, it's like the alert system. Now you are what they are being alert instead of your little ones being abducted by people they probably knew about to allow the abduction or them them, themselves to take the heat off of what they do when they do terrible things underneath the cover. And this is another UN imposition of the rights of child. Uh, They do that, that they take care of your child. And now I get frustrated because I just, all these words, people don't have a clue what they're being told and they don't know the first thing how to respond and that they should. So uh, they're, they're gearing up on their network. They're going to move faster and faster and faster. They're, it's going to be very difficult if this other bill to back this up. Now all of a sudden, a Blue Lives Matter has more rights than it always has in the military consequence uh, than you. It's not actually blue, but that's what they uh, want to talk to you about because it's actually you being black and blue. And they're going to make the system to protect themselves, not you. And it comes from DHS, where we are installed, we installed that because we put the war of terror in your life and you did nothing. We heard crickets. We get to continue. Keep being crickets. Thank you very much. So, in all that, we can see the deceit when a few mo- cops are good. They go in with all the, you know, all the innocent intention to be good, do good in the world. And we see how the inner workings of this. I've talked to you before about, again, these people just have to say they did it within their job. It's in the policies. I told you you have to attack those policies and uh, make it so that they can't make these excuses. That becomes another focus. I'll just bring that back up. But here's a cop inside says, cop exposes one ticket per hour quota scam after being fired for refusing to enforce it. So, government, you know, we already know this, but this is more evidence that they're not interested in uh, in being just. We have we live in a denial of justice. That's a constitutional international violation for all y'all if you're paying attention how big this thing is against us, how big the concepts are that no one talks about. I talk about it all the time, but no one really Oh, you'd rather do the documentary on the, watch the document uh, documentary on uh on how the Fed was made, and it's all wrong. I'm going to get into all these narratives. I think those are important. It's all doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Cop exposes the, 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 the fact of one ticket per hour quota. I want to remind you, I told you, you don't need to have a quota. All you need to do is tell a cop he may not be able to be employed because he can't afford to have them, and he'll start writing more tickets, and that is reinforced in this story and or more. Now, we can always say, I guess, oh, we know that, that will, you're a fool not to know that's what's going on. Look, and it, listen, it doesn't matter. You can talk, we can say, oh, how much, how smart we are about all this, how S-M-A-R-T we are. It's not being intelligent to then turn our back on it. Here's evidence from somebody that's doing it, gives you how he figured it out, uh, how they're doing it. it. It doesn't talk, it, it talks what I told you. You don't have to even say to do it. You just give the impression that somebody, you can be detrimentally affected as a cop and you'll start to do it. Another technique of control. What's the biggest technique of control? Creating a system that's transparent to everybody that isn't what it's supposed to be. And you start little, you have little subtlety uh, clues about that if you pay attention. Judge placed, Texas judge placed on leave after officials discover she's not a U.S. citizen. Everyone say, oh, you're not a U.S. citizen, not a judge. Think about the system, folks. Don't get, don't lose the point here. 
Texas judge placed on leave after officials discover she's not a U.S. citizen. And in the story you hear, she's not going to be found to have been uh, offered it in any fraudulent way. Everybody knew it. What was interesting in the report is the acknowledgement, as I've been telling you, the Bar Association, the Texas Board of Law Examiners note that the attorneys in the state are not required to be U.S. citizens, as people who are lawfully admitted for permanent residence can practice law as well. Well, uh, attorneys under one provision of law are foreign agents anyway, so that makes sense. But your attorneys are really members of a corporate association. Your whole legal system is a corporate association. Your state is now under a corporate, corporate, I said corporate, not because it's all in caps, it's because it's structured underneath the Model Business Corporations Act of the Bar Association. How many times have we talked about all this stuff? I repeat myself. I know you don't tune in because I'm boring. I keep telling you all the same stuff, and you know it. Now, my problem is you don't do anything with it. Texas Board of Law Examiners. Oh, that's another agency set up by whom? The Bar Association. And then we find out, we've got to be careful, these boards have to have a conflict of interest problem. But they embrace this one. Did you know your judges don't have to be U.S. citizens? Might have a problem for you. Actually, in some regard, when you start seeing this way and what they've done, that's the republic you were gave and the adulteration to it by the occupier over time that was supposed to be kept from them to do that. They're not finding a problem. What they're going to have this judge do, she was elected by you all because you didn't go look and find out where she come from and that this is only an employable condition that has had nothing to do with an officer of a constitutional government, if you have put that together. Even in Texas, Texas, Texas what? That your judges don't have to be U.S. citizens. Why you see the statement and the constraint in the Constitution for the, for the presidential office which you found out in uh, the unqualified one doesn't matter anyway, which I told you shows you you're not living in that republic because we didn't keep it. So interesting story for me to tell you is these attorneys can just have a a piece of paper that says they're lawfully admitted for permanent residence, and the bar is cool with that. Are you cool with it? Did you know that? Why does it matter? What's the, what's the, uh, the precedent around that? You need to find out. This is where it starts to get into the, even if the officer was de facto and not de jure, it don't matter. All their decisions matter as long as they intended them to mean the same thing as that office. How subtle that slippery slope was and how fast they pulled you out of your constitutional republic. And how none of you noticed. Now, I'm saying none of you, I didn't notice. I didn't notice up until I had five cops going to gun me down three decades ago or more now. Where did America go? That's been my, my, if I can call it a quest, my quest is where where did America went? We didn't keep it, folks. Pretty simple. So I'm not out of this in judgment. I'm just saying y'all because this is for y'all, for all of us. So that was a judge, doesn't have to be a permanent resident, doesn't really have to care about our laws. They're supposed to adhere to the law because they know the law, don't they? No, they're telling you they don't know nothing. Well, okay, that's not a not proper uh, English, is it? They don't know anything. They make it up. They go by their bench book. They're told how to make these decisions, and it's all on policy, not law anyway, do you remember? You get how this is working, folks. This is, pro- this is a really big story, actually. But it's not. It's just To me, it's just the, the tale of the, the, the confirmation of the cor- corruption, and it's agreed to. And, and and you and your voluntary state that you are agree to that by your consent to not to not make an issue of it. Uh, those of you in Texas think you're free and you get, you're uh, you're able to cede from the union. Uh, tough. How's that? Tough. This woman is going to be expected to qualify her uh, residency with the proper paperwork. They've given her leave to do that, and she'll be back on the bench because you all asked her to be there. Apparently in Texas, it don't matter if you're just a, someone lawfully admitted to residence, permanent residence. I have no character on, on the woman. I'm wondering about our law. 
I'm wondering about the faithful uh, adherence to our law. I'm wondering about how was she so brilliant that there was a whole bunch more people more capable who were born here. If I get past the problem of the corporate structure, which has no allegiance to any nation. I hope you pick that one up. That is global governance policy right in your face. Uh, I guess enough said. There's so much to say and go on. And every time I talk about it, there's another subject matter to bring up. I hear nobody bringing this stuff up, and I can't bring it all up. There's so much more. And I, and I guess that's the the dismay I have. There is so much wrong with all this that no one did a peep. And all I hear is a bunch of whiners being wounded because they misinterpreted this stuff and got hurt by that misinterpretation instead of doing, as I've been saying, about making your records and prove it through that way first before you move. We get a bunch of whiners telling us the wrong thing. Let's uh, abandon everything and let's not look at the fact that we have usurpers all around us. We have a military complica- uh, complex around us. It's just not out there making military weapons to go sell to some place to go bomb some people through some Wahhabist uh, 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 religion to go actually attack Iran. It has nothing to do with that. It's the occupation of your life local by legal entities. And you were cool with that. You've been cool with it. And all it takes is people standing up and start to make that not okay. And we have a little bit of evidence. This is a long-standing tab I've had. I'm finally getting a little bit out, out, out of them here. I'm going to move through a few more. I'll make a little more progress down my tabs. Mississippi cops now need warrants to seize property. You can too. Mississippi became, became the latest state in, to tighten its civil forfeiture laws when Governor Phil Bryant, Bryant signed a bill on Monday that was months, uh, maybe a month or two ago, uh, signed on Monday that will require warrants for police to seize property through civil forfeiture. Law enforcement agencies do not need a fu- to file criminal charges or even secure criminal conviction to permanently confiscate cash, cards, and other forms of personal property. You need to do that now because you don't long, you no longer actually live in a law state. You live in a policy state. Your policy has to then direct the, the soldiers, the military enforcers that they can only go so far. This kind of stuff will protect you and get, make the guideline against a law coming from the federal government if it's valid on the states and will be because they take money from the feds. That's the other problem with that. And you've got to get that out. But if it's imposed that they can be almost absolutely immune, these kinds of constraints in law will be the policy directive they cannot use as to excuse. In other words, so when they do this, that they cannot use the 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 um, the, the statutes. When they when you speak to the felony, you have to come into your state law and define what that felony is in your state if it's un, undone at the federal level. You have to get more integrated in the corporate sense of what policy is. And if you don't, they make these rules, they make the future we want, and you ain't we. You is you. Federal court allows lawsuit on recording police to proceed. This is an important study as well uh, to understand. It's a major free, a major win for free speech and police accountability. A Massachusetts federal court has ruled in favor of uh, two ACLU clients who seek to exercise their constitutional right to record the police in secret. Now, I won't go through the whole thing. The point is that there's laws on the books that you can use. If they're not there, you have to put them there. The problem is with this new federal stuff, you start recording and they then make an excuse because they know how to say, I felt threatened and I was in my lawful capacity. They can take this right back away from you if you don't have a check and balance. They're not going to get a check and balance if you don't make it important. Everywhere, in all your states, this is a hang-up about having multiple states as well. Uh, they can they just eat away at the states that you didn't show up, and uh, then they make a they they use the constitution against you that all the states together can actually move something through eventually even to the constitution and amend it. So it's not so easy now to fight these. You have to do this on a state by state basis, but it, but but you still can do it. And if you don't, if we were told we could do it, what that was a notice to us that we we need to. So we we. We have constraints we can put on all the oppression I was talking about that's on the on the on right in our face all the time. We can bring constraints. I've talked about this before. This isn't even new. But I don't hear anybody saying, 
even not even telling me they're doing it, and then t- hey, look, we got a we got an initiative through. Uh, we have a referendum because the law that the legislature put through, we got a referendum to refer something to the people, or we have an initiative that says that, that what the legislature did was no good. You, I don't hear any of this coming back from the people, and I'm talking about the men and women. So we see constraints. It's all made by us. If we don't put the constraints, the one who does put the uh, put the um, expands if it was a limitation expands the authority. They get that until you offset it. And this is not even talking yet about the masses not having to stand up for themselves and say we're not going to take it anyway. This is kind of what's going on with the miners. Uh, not so, uh, not so good, but still the sentiment. But we don't care what your law is. And then everybody shudders that they hope they don't get picked on and they still go against the supposed law. But they don't prepare themselves and prepare to come after the government for doing it, which was a complete crime on so many levels. It's not funny. No, they just get bit resistant. They hope that the, they're not going to have to deal with the future and they think that that was good enough. I'm not going to listen to your, your law, your policy. That's a good sentiment, but it doesn't work anymore. And that's why you shudder to think that maybe one day you might actually have to stand there and and have to say that to someone and watch as your all your stuff gets stolen and, and they just justify it by saying, well, I was just doing my job and I feared for my safety. That's why he's dead. And, and what is the connection to all this is that they get you into commerce. They only they only stole that property, even if it's limited by state law, because they got you in a commerce, um, a prohibited commerce activity. Remember, when they do get the drug war, they have to put you in doing something in commerce. And so we hear these stories, and this is where it extends. Why I bring this story up was the same thing in commerce. Women, Michigan woman locked up over suspended license gives birth uh, on jail floor. A Michigan woman was forced to deliver her baby on the dirty jailhouse floor after being stopped for driving with a suspended license. Driving is a commercial activity. Nobody understands how to not do that and to make the right discussion, to make the right record, and start a bunch of people making the record on how wrong this is. That we get to the day today, she's not treated as a woman. She's talking. They're talking about a legal entity, an animal on the at the other side, and that she didn't give birth to anything on the jail floor from their standpoint. They don't care. They're talking about legal entities doing business. She wasn't. Uh, they, they probably even looked for the. Did you have a license to give birth on the floor? how how this thing starts to actually work as a, a fraud upon the the people uh, men and women about this license that they get you get you've asked you've applied this to you to get thrown into jail and have your baby on the floor i don't doubt that the, there's a sickness in these people that they actually laugh that that happened but this is what you can expect men this is what they, you can expect in the future for your women because you haven't stepped up and made the the actual discussion about what the problem is and that the government has defamed you, added status to you that allows their a jurisdiction to come on so they steal from you in the first place. If you identify that they weren't supposed to be able to do that, then they can't have the excuse that it looks like the blue shield line coming from the feds can impart. Because remember, the feds are coming from commerce as well. It's probably the only other thing that can come to come into the states and the taking of those grants. So thank you for tuning in today. I hope uh, something I said was uh, get you thinking or get you, more importantly, doing what you need to do, make the wrong uh, that you find right and persist. Uh, thank you, Grimner, for what you do on the reallibertymedia.com and uh, Blogcaster and the Archive and uh, uh, freedomsnetwork.com, uh, the FN Network. Join up for the social network. And, uh, Jules, thank you very much for the broadcast, the past cast and recast. Recast is on Thursday. The others uh, come up at any time, I suppose, when I've got the uh, time that Jules has put me on for uh, ucy.com uh, network there. Thank you very much, and uh, everybody else. Do appreciate you listening in. Pass the broadcast around. We're doing our best. <clears throat> you got to do your part, too. Otherwise, it's, uh, they're going to just run us down. I'll be here next week. Tech this and nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 